that album you worked on the whole album right make way for the mother load which you know i think is a very under appreciated album for the power that it had and i think also people don't look at the the craftiness as far as everyone that that worked the whole team that was working on it with yourself dell cube yo yo i and- was uh, i wish i could do it over i mean i was learning i was brand new you know i did that before america's most so it was more or less you know me and and uh dj pool you know shout out to dj pool he was right. around and uh he was teaching me you know broaden my my horizons with with the way i was producing and then, you know, I was just producing with a SB12 and, and trying to figure it out. So I, I think you know, I could have done a little bit better. I'm real hard on myself on the, um, on the uh, Make Way for the Mother Low record. But when I listen back to it, you know, uh, Girl Don't Be No Fool and a lot yeah. of them songs. And, uh, They're very powerful. And uh, doom, 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 what can I do, you know? And, what can uh, I do? Right, right. And those songs I listen to, I'm like, ooh, I forget. Like, oh, those is nice, but... You know, technology changed, you know, and uh, the way we were producing. This is why uh, um, you can't play my yo-yo. I end up changing it to um, um, devotions. You know, at first it was Spank by uh, by uh, James Brown. And if you listen, you can't play my yo-yo. You still hear the ha. You still hear that in it. And uh, I changed it to uh, I, I, I start being more loose with the music. And I was like, what? You can change it. We can change it, and then that's when uh, Devotions was made. So, I, I think Yo Yo record is one of those records that you get into uh, when the time permits. I still think it's a little bit ahead of its time, you yeah, know. Even so, still, right? <laughs> and and it still is a it still changes what the women are doing now. You know, a lot of women are being you know shock value. And um, Yo-Yo wasn't trying to be shock value. She was actually wanting to be a dope rapper and hang with the dudes and, and, and get on stage and, and, and oppose Cube all the time. You know, a girl couldn't have been no no hooker type girl with a soft mind to, you know, go against Ice Cube. You know, they did it twice with the, with the Bonnie and Clyde and, right. you know, they kept that going. And, you know, so she had to be strong at some point and not be whorish. You know, she was kind of... Kicking like a street girl, but not a gangster. I don't, I, we didn't. We wouldn't want that. Mm-hmm. She was more like a street girl. And why? Why street was street knowledge? I don't hey, don't. Go figure. <laughs> go figure. <laughs> that worked in. Yeah. <laughs> but why was that so important to her? To you? To the to the crew? That's the way. I mean, you gotta talk to Yo Yo. I mean, okay. she was a big sister to a lot of girls. You know, her mother used to. Uh, have uh, I think like a girls' home, so a lot of them girls that was in Yo Yo video was like you know her her little sister. So she was a a leader to a lot of her sisters. So uh, a lot of stuff just couldn't fly, and her mom wasn't. Her mom was around, so her mom was definitely there. She she wasn't letting it. She didn't like. Oh the you know I'm not a whole no and you know and Cube talking back and forth and we had to tell her mom like oh we're playing <laughs> we're just playing and her mom didn't want it so you know, her mom's still in her life so at some point her mom was gonna let that sh- let it let it fly like that yeah shout out to Yo Yo I just went to her uh, <laughs> birthday party and I saw her mom there I, uh, I just said hi to her her but, mom uh, was the first lady I ever heard say Domino jingle like lingo mm. like. Ten two toes, no oh, gotcha. stuff. She could, <laughs> I was like, man, her mom's so cool. I was like, I ain't never heard that. Mm-hmm. I don't play domino. Well, <laughs> I play them terribly. Yeah, you play just not well. You're saying mm-hmm. my nickname in dominoes is dump truck. Mm. Somehow the dude next to me is gonna get thirty points. Getting dumped. Never on. knows how I do this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this happens. <laughs> Cheers. And now, in 1991, we get to, in my opinion, what is the best gangster rap and one of the best rap albums, oh, you period, one. of all time. You forgot one more. Well, I'm going, well, name it, but I'm going with Death Certificate G-Rap. next. But that's later. That's one That's year 92. Later. Right. We haven't now. got to that yet. But we was working on it. came out in 92, but we were still working on it at the same time. I have to go by release dates, Jim. <laughs> I have to <laughs> well, go by release dates. Well, I'm telling you, we were still working. 
Yeah. Well, we got definitely we got plenty of cool G rap we got to talk about. <laughs> yeah. But still, when you saying all these records that we were doing, I would I just kept on working on music and working on music. So you know, I did the the G rap, and you know, like you said, the the we, just a lot of music, man. I it was dope to be that free back in the day. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Just to not compete with nobody. I felt like I had a I had a reason. I felt like uh, they were listening. And I was competing with the best people on, on we was going platinum. Right. On a regular basis. Right. Now. So I start taking it a lot more serious. Like, you know. So why why? Why not like when you're getting in and you're like, man, I'm in the studio with Palm Squad or I'm in the studio, you know, now we gotta deal with East West Atlantic or why did it take a little bit for that to kick in? Technology change. Okay. Technology got better. You know, at first it was just limited and you was only dope as your your equipment mm. back in the day. Right. <clears throat> now everybody got the same equipment. That's why all the music sounds the same. Right. But back in the day you was dope because you only used this or you only used that. So when you get a little change, you start getting the same stuff Teddy Riley have, same stuff that, mm. you know, Jimmy Jam and them got. You know, you start buying the better equipment, your music starts sounding better. And if you're spending that kind of money on your equipment, you got to be taking it more serious because you got to learn how to work it. <laughs> okay. It just don't work itself. You know? So did any of that apply to making death certificate? Yeah. So how how would you say including technology and including equipment, but how would you say that you grew, developed, and evolved from America's Most Wanted, Make Way for the Mother Load, Kill It Will, on to Death Certificate? Uh, being around DJ Pooh. DJ Pooh was like the, uh, uh, like the, you know, the, the chief, like, you know, like when we did America's Most, the Bond Squad was like the chief, like, you know, it was like the captain. Then mm-hmm. uh, when we did Death Certificate, DJ Pooh was the captain, okay. so he was like more hair spearheaded. The boogeyman. How, yeah. Well, he that's the <laughs> yeah. he had a crew called the boogeyman. Bob, Bobcat, of course. And 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 Rush. Yeah. And, and um, so they had that thing going, and uh, we were just competing with each other. And uh, uh DJ Pooh took it to another level because he was professional. He he already had did King T. He already done it. And men plus me and him been in the studio already. So for him to come in on. On death certificate, it was like my older brother, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, because we, we, me and DJ Pooh had this funny joke. It's me, DJ Pooh, and, and King T have a funny joke that Dre used to have an SB 1200, right? And Dre used to bring it home. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dre used to bring the the SB 12 home, and then I get ready to go to school about 7 in the morning, DJ Pooh and them would come at 7 in the morning and pick up the drum machine and take it. Okay. And then by the time I come home, they didn't already brought it back and Dre didn't went to the studio. Wow. So this was a process. Like we were all together. So on death certificate, um, yeah, uh DJ Pooh DJ Pooh bought bought that real hood kinda you know, you see how death certificate, you know, with the Muslims and the street stuff, steady mobbing and these kind of songs. He he kind of brought that niche that we needed to make it most street. Mm-hmm. Rather than making it more political or making mm-hmm. it, you know, more like America's Most Wanted. We wanted Cube to be the same person. We just wanted the music to be the same, meaning the same quality. You right. know what I'm saying? Because well, we was going through a couple of different sounds and, we, you know, it, luckily it worked out. Mm-hmm. It didn't go down. It went up. Nah. It, if anything... You would, uh, I could argue it went up, right. <laughs> but right. that's my opinion. I just think that certificate from beginning to end is a phenomenal thing. I think it's, if not the best rap album, it's in the top probably five at the lowest. Right. I just think it's phenomenal and it touches on so many things on one album. And unfortunately, a lot of the political stuff that he addresses is still happening today. Right. As, you know, the thing about gangster rap that's terrible is that what Schooly D, Ice T, Ice Cube, Easy E, NWA, and everybody else that helped create it, even Toddy T and Mixmaster Spade, mm-hmm. if you want to include them, and even King T, that stuff is still happening today. 
Right. And that's the unfortunate thing. And Cube told me one time uh, that he wished he could stop. And this was a long time ago. This is probably in like the year 2000 or something. But mm-hmm. I was talking to Cube one day and he just told me, he said, I wish the songs that I made were no longer important or relevant because the stuff I was rapping about doesn't happen anymore. Right. But, you know, we're in 2019 and this stuff is still happening. That oh. Well, I, I look at it like it, it has changed. Okay. But it's happening still. Right. But it has changed. But <clears throat> like I say, everybody don't have a voice. Right. So he was the voice of how this how this happens. Like you go to, you know, I, you know, the. You know, small. You know, with the with the stand your ground situation, like right. that's going on in Florida. You know, that was always going on, <clears throat> but the rap and the people that is going through the stuff is making it like it don't happen out here. So it'd be like, oh, the stand your ground don't happen. You you know you get sh- no. You know, it's not like that. A person can't just shoot you because they have, you know, their feel for their life. So some of the stuff that was going on with us back in the day was happening to them, but they wouldn't give them a voice. So right. Cube have a voice. So the, 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 the gang banging and all that, where they thought it was what it was, now it's going on in Los, in, in New York. Now mm-hmm. New York got Crips and Bloods. Now right. they, Crips and Bloods everywhere. Right. So a lot of those issues still go over there, but they might have... They said killing is down in California. You know, mm-hmm. well, in Los Angeles, it's been down for years. Like, but you right. go other places and these raps still apply. Right. That's called good music. Yeah. Very powerful. Right. And I think uh, the album just really touched on a lot of, of uh, you know, society in a lot of ways. And of course, uh, one of the more politically charged ones was Black Korea. And right. that that one, you know, I thought was interesting on so many levels. Obviously, that had been going on here in Los Angeles. Right. But what I also thought was very insightful and great about it was that what this album addressed was more than just black and white. Right. And for that... Those relationships got better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, between the blacks and the Koreans, that got better. So, and then other places where they set up shop and do stuff, they realize, okay, we need we need to burn this motherfucker down again. You know, in order for y'all to get it. Right. And then you're like, well, you want you want me to play the song? <laughs> you want me to please hear what happened in L.A.? Y'all better, you know, don't do that to us. Don't be looking at us when we walk down the. The aisle. Yeah, yeah. We're going to steal some. You want me to play this Black Korea song? So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. But I, uh, I like doing that song. That was one of those short songs. Yeah. But very powerful. Right. And um, that was that was one of the things. And then Us, of course, was another one that kind of flipped the mirror. Right. Or it gave you a mirror as opposed to a point of finger. Right. So with making those two songs in particular, since they were so not only different in rap at the time, but different for even what the album was in a lot of ways. What do you remember about the aura, the writing, the production, the creation of of us and Black Korea in particular? Well, when when Pooh makes music and they was making their music. It makes Q rap a certain way. Okay. So when I'm feeling myself and I'm starting to make my music, it make him rap a certain way. So most of the time when I would give him beats, he would feel like that on the beat. And I, I used to argue with him a little bit. I'm like, man, give me some 6 four hopping. <laughs> but but, 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 but um, I, I love that he uh, decided to put those topics on, on my music. So mm. he, he, he makes it up. When uh, he, you don't go to him, be like, "Oh man, we should talk about this." He'll come in there and just outdo himself. Like he'll be like, "Oh, let's talk about this." Okay, he was in the you know in the rag, you know the glass house or whatever in this song, and then the next song, you know, what the fuck you, you know now, dun, 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 because we started touring. Mm-hmm. And when we started touring, we started needing music that was going to appeal to all the places that we went. So those was just us understanding that. Just like Eminem, like Eminem can do his his music 
with a whole bunch of white people. Like it can be slow, it can you know the one light thing, but you know, and <laughs> one knee, you know, but I see it as dope. Right. But you might can't do that in the strip club. You know right. what I'm saying? You might can't have that. So when we was doing a, some of them songs, they were so slow that when we get to the Lollapaloozas, we get to those big tours, it kind of bring it down. Like so, and then we can't do Endangered Species for the whole show. Right. So we started adding more songs that could fit into different genres as as we went along because we start performing in front of more white people or at least that's what i thought well that's why i start making it because okay. i start being influenced by oh that's dope you well, know the wrong brother to mess with mm-hmm. is one of those right that that's at the top toward the top of the album right that has more of that feel to it right but once again, I'm growing too. You know, my eyes is is, is, is they, they, you know they hear too. If I can say that, like, so when I see something, I'm like, oh, you know. So being on the road with Ministry and Red Hot Chili Peppers and you know um, Flea, you know, of course, you know they did the Wicked song or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think that was on Predator or something mm-hmm. like that. But we were still around that kind of world, so we wasn't just so biased to be doing just black music if i can call it that mm-hmm. but we just wanted to have a spectrum of music that everybody like we was going to europe we was going all over so i think those songs kind of addressed it of uh, the tempo where we were going we had the music that a fit where we were going okay and then <clears throat> looking at death certificate being the album that it is what would you say is its legacy no vaseline which we didn't even talk about. You asked me the question. Yes. <laughs> but. I mean, everybody you, liked my summer vacation. Everybody like man. Every. The dope thing about Ice Cube music was that you can consistently play it all the way through. Absolutely. And, and that's where I start getting jobs to work on people music to um, sequence the, uh, the album in a way that it has a balance. Mm-hmm. So all the albums that Cube did. When you know as well, probably now, um, there's a sequence that happens to make you follow along with the story. You know, it goes up and down. It don't just go to slow to fast. It goes up and down with the emotion that 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 rocks with it. So, when you look at uh, my summer vacation, you know that was around. You know, the first time a lot of dudes was traveling with dope. So mm-hmm. that that was brand new to everybody. You know, and then. Um, you know, just a lot of the songs on there was just ahead of their time. A lot of dudes are <clears throat> are really rapping like that. They really think they, you know, they dope dealers now. You know, we was right. making songs for dope dealers. Now dope dealers are making songs for rappers. You know, <laughs> it's a difference now. <laughs> you right, know what right. I'm saying? So we was just making music for the niggas and we was making music for the people. Now the strippers is making music for the rappers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you be like, okay, that's that's cool. The other thing is cool, but uh, that's what uh, the legacy of uh, Death Certificate is just the energy, man. And it was, we was young and we was going through it. And uh, you can play the record all the way through. Mm-hmm. That's going to be the thing. And uh, America's Most, you can play it all the way through. Well, this is stuff that people, you know, they don't know. And, uh, if if they want to know, they can find out to yeah. where the social media is the way it is right now. Um, it's easier to find out what's going on or what went on and what happened. You know what I'm saying? But um, back then, you know, people didn't know. You know, they, well, that, that's why we're here, man, right. on Unique Access. Right. And that's why you're here. Jeez, Thank, that's why thankfully. you're here. <laughs> thankfully. I can get outside and say this shit all day. Nobody listen. Nah. <laughs> nah, but Jinx, man, always a pleasure. And for those that do want to find you on social media, until we get to part two, how can people find you? Oh, man. If you they want them to. You can hit me on um, on my on my Instagram and little stuff like that. DJ Sir Jinx. You know, that DJ Sir Jinx on uh, Instagram. That's probably it. And, uh, you know, they can go... Uh, and they can uh, check out a couple of my albums that I got out. I always <clears throat> get mad when I when I hear um, the interviews and 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 I have a dope album called West Wing, mm-hmm. and I I always want to um, talk about that record because it's so dope. And I did a I did a whole album like with with Corrupt and Noble, and it's called Hood War Order, 
I, I got that record that's real dope. You know, you like West Coast. You like mm-hmm. how, how I get down. And I also got some instrumental records. You know, I got um, Next Man's Treasure and uh, Beats for Food and um, City Never Sleeps. And these are just instrumentals of a bunch of music. You know, right. I do a, a lot of music. So y'all can go check that out in your spare time. You know, when you're doing a little trip to somewhere, popping in, and, <laughs> and it's, it's a dope album, man. It's mixed very well, and it's uh, got a lot of features on it. So, yeah. So, y'all can hit me on that on my Instagram, or just check me out on on um, YouTube, or y'all can check it out through uh, iTunes or wherever you purchase music from, or just go to YouTube and listen to it, you know. Yeah, but we'll be doing more. I was trying to do it relatively chronologically speaking. Yeah. So we're going to get to a lot of that when, when you come back. Cheers. But we appreciate it, Jinx. Thank you for coming through, man. Man, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Cheers. In the beginning, hip hop was ruled by the East Coast. Then the West Coast rose to prominence thanks to gangster rap. Hip hop changed the world. Gangster rap changed the narrative. I'm representing for the gangsters all across the world. And then changed the world again. Cause I'll come and take your life away. The history of gangster rap features unheard stories, unseen photos and documents, all with exclusive interviews from the founders and players who shape gangster rap. I think a real gangster rapper has to scare you a little bit. The history of gangster rap written by veteran rap journalist Soren Baker. In stores now. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick. Be sure to pick up my homeboy Soren Baker's book, The History of Gangster Rap, if you really want to know what we do.